Good morning, magandang umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Today is Friday, and it is build date 180. Yes, build date 180 on the construction <laughs> schedule out at Villa Feliz. 180 days of building, uh, almost six months, uh, but we are getting there, which means we only have about uh, three months left. <laughs> And uh, I hope we meet that schedule, and I think we will. I keep asking my builder every single day, and he keeps reassuring me, yes, we are on schedule. So that's a good thing. So anyway, uh, I'm trying to get out on time to be there about the start time of uh, when the workers actually start work. And uh, I look forward to today's build day. So anyway, let's go ahead and get out to the job site. So without further delay, let's get today's video underway. Magandang umaga, Michelle. No. Yeah, yeah. I left it home the other day when I went you know, to pick up the family. I have to bring it back in. Uh -huh. I want to take some shots today of some of the uh, roof work. Uh -huh, okay. How's your day today? I'm good. You're good? Yeah, schedule for laundry. Oh, <laughs> Friday. That's right. Friday laundry day. Tuesday, flat iron. Yeah. Friday. Uh, that's it. Yes. That's life. That's, that's life. Routine. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, well, you have a wonderful day. Okay. I'll see you later when I get off work. Good morning. Chicken with coconut milk. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, okay. I think I thought I thought boy was the... That is, it is. It's a, yeah, it is. Everything you make, I like. Morning, guys. Morning, James. Oh, you got a, you got, you got all the young ones out yes, here today. So. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. How are you today? No. no? Oh, yeah. A lot of enthusiasm in that one. <laughs> James, do you want kids? What? Do I want? Do I want one? Yes. Are you giving them away? Are, are you giving children away? Yes. Oh, okay. can I take them with me? Samakayo? <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I, I think he's happy here with the rest of the kids. All right, I'll see you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. So anyway, the walk-in today is going to be a little bit short. Uh, I, I normally do try to get some shout-outs in on the way into work, but my hands are kind of full right now. And, uh, morning, right. And since I'm, since I'm, my hands are full and things like that, uh, what I think I'm going to try to do today, good morning. What I think I'm going to try to do this morning is a, uh, a Bahe Kubo time. We have not had a Bahe Kubo time in ages. Uh, I've, I've got a backlog of comments that I'd like to address and I do a few shout outs as well. So let's go ahead and try to fit that into today's schedule. Morning, sir. Ah, good morning. How are you this morning? Beautiful day today? I, 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 I think so. I think so.
some more more sand. Wow. It is, it is incredible how much rock, sand, and uh, concrete, all this that goes into building uh, building a house in the Philippines. Uh, it's, I, I don't know how many, I, I could go back, because I document every time we had a delivery. I, I actually have to pay. I have to pay for um, every time a vehicle comes on site, whether it's a four, four wheel, six wheel, eight wheel, whatever, and the price gets higher. For every delivery that they drive on it's part of the HOA agreement that you have when you're building an office uh, but and that, when you put a deposit down there's like there's a like a bond that you put down at the very beginning before you can start building and you put this amount of money down and what happens every time they come they deduct that from your bond and at the end you're supposed to get a, a refund on what's left over uh, or if there would be more then you would have to add more to it but uh, uh, we're having a lot of deliveries <laughs> I hope we're okay with our bond. Well, anyway, the uh, the roofing team is here, and a little, uh, I think they're getting started just a little bit later than they normally do. But it's a beautiful, beautiful day today. Is good. if it stays like this, we're going to get a lot accomplished today. And today is Friday, and then we only have one more day. And if I remember correctly, my builder was saying uh, next week. I thought he said Monday or Tuesday would be about the time when we would start roofing tiles. I don't think we're going to meet that goal. I don't think it's going to be Monday or Tuesday, but I'll check with him uh, again anyway, and um, we'll see. So this is going to be the uh, the frame that's going to go around the outside of the galvanized grate that's going inside the sump. Uh, this will slide down inside here. This will fit inside the floor uh, around the tiles in the opening for the sump. Yeah, everybody's working. We, we got the day started and a uh, little bit here, a little bit there. Uh, lots of little bits hopefully make up a lot bit. <laughs> hey. So anyway, everybody is uh, working on their particular... Let's is there any food in there? Right, did I leave any? Is there enough inside? Oh, you ate it all. You ate. I have to go visit Roy today. I have to get you some more dog food. We'll go down and we'll get you some more dog food today, okay? You must know because you're not going through your little, your little creepy hole right here. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to get Baje Kubo set up. Uh, maybe answer a few questions uh, for Baje Kubo time this morning and uh, get the day started. So let me get set up inside of here. But before I do get started today, I need to do a few shout outs. And uh, I have a belated birthday uh, shout out to go to Dennis Salas, who's over in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia over at KSA. And it was his birthday yesterday on the 21st. So happy birthday, Dennis. And also Jane Cornish, her husband James is over in uh, Canada, working over in Canada, eh? And it's his birthday. It's his 51st birthday. And she wanted to make sure that we have a birthday wish going out to James. So happy birthday, James. And Jane also reminds me, it is her mother's birthday uh, on the 23rd. Uh, her mother's name is Gall Death. And uh, I want to wish Gall Death a happy birthday from me and from your daughter, Jane. <laughs> and also on the 23rd, along with Jane's uh, mother's birthday, 
is uh, Sergeant First Class uh, Jonathan Balderrama. And uh, he is turning 60 years old. 60 years old. Happy birthday, Jonathan. And also, Langa Gigi. She asked me to do a shout out for Eliza De Leon. And it's her birthday too. So, Eliza, happy birthday. And Langa also asked me to do a shout out to uh, Mr. Jason Brer who is working out in Dubai and he is from the UK. Uh, shout out to you, Jason. And of course, why not a little bit of rain to shut everything down? at the most productive part of the day. So they had to remove that one tile there. That one tile, one of the edges was sticking out uh, high enough that if you were barefooted, you would uh, bump your toe into it. It was, it, was just a, it was either a bad tile lay, or after the tile got laid, that maybe somebody accidentally stepped on it, and it caused it to shift a little bit. I don't, I don't know. Uh, so what he's doing, he, he, uh, he's replacing that tile that was inside there that was uh, placed uh, incorrectly. I'm glad somebody's getting some rest. Well, I think a lot of people are getting rest right now. Well, it's, it's 11.30 uh, and uh, the, the rain is still coming down, but I can almost guarantee you, even if it stopped in the next couple of minutes, which it could, because you see how bright it is on this side here, uh, there is going to be no work completed uh, between now and uh, the next 30 minutes when lunchtime starts. So anyway, I'm going to uh, run and go get some the dogs, uh, some dog food and uh, go grab a bite to eat and then come back. Hopefully this cloud is gone and after uh, lunchtime we can resume normal work. Well anyway, I got my lunch. I had some lomi, I have a full stomach, and I am back in Baje Kubo right now. Oh, and I got the uh, Marianne and Hapon. I got them some dog food from Roy's. So they are set for the next five days. Anyway, as promised, we're going to do a quick Baje Kubo session. And we haven't done a Baje Kubo session. And Baje Kubo, for those who are haven't been around for a while and long-term subscribers, it's time that we sit down and we talk about we talk about things. If there's something on my mind, we talk about that. If it has to do with construction and my ideas or your ideas that you comment on the uh, comment section, we talk about that. And today we're going to do comments. We're going to go and we're going to take a look at a few of the comments on here. We're not going to do a lot of them. We're just going to go go through. I, I've been breezing through some of the comments and a lot of them uh, are addressing the tiling and the amount of speed it takes. And I know I indicate and I imply sometimes that I think these guys could do uh, a lot more and they could and they could do a lot more. And I also understand, like a few people have made a comment, uh, that are that understand that the wages here in the Philippines are much lower than many other places, especially around the world. But even in the Philippines, uh, when you work in a place like a barangay like this, instead of a big city like Manila, Makati, uh, any place that has higher wages, uh, the wages uh, are a little bit lower here. And I understand that. Uh, some of the reasons why I make these observations and I point out the the lack of enthusiasm for getting these jobs done as quick as possible is that we're on a time schedule. We're on a time crunch. Uh, my builder keeps telling me a specific date and, and we're trying to go with that specific date. And I, I look at some and I can calculate in my mind because I do construction work as well uh, in the U.S. Uh, my father was a contractor and I worked with him. Uh, and when I set up a schedule, I can kind of see how much I have an idea how much time it will take to move that earth, how much time it will take to build something, to install windows, to install tiles and things like that. I've done these things before. I've done installing tiles. I've done earth movement excavation myself. So when I see these and I see that they're slower than what I, my expectations are, uh, these are when I start talking about um, that I think we, I would really like it to go a little bit quicker. But I understand, and as long as my builder tells me and he assures me that we're going to be done in time, I have no problem with it being uh, a little bit slower on the actual work itself. And especially when it comes to detail and when we have to get things uh, very accurate, like tiling, any of the detail work, and like tin work for the roofing, for, for the lighting and special features that we have inside the house. So I don't mind them taking a little bit of time. Sometimes it's excessive, 
but then a, a lot of that has to do with the the uh, qualification and the experience of these the labor the skilled labor that's working uh, so if you so we're going to talk about because everybody keeps talking about the Sierra in the basement and even I keep talking about the Sierra in the basement I think the Sierra in the basement is a three-day job the tiling should have been a three-day job and uh, the, we're in day 10 and and we're I'm, I'm gonna say around I'm making an estimate I haven't gone back and looked at every single day but I think we're about 10 days into that but he has done an excellent job and uh, as long as it doesn't impact the overall completion date of the job on the house uh, I have no problem with that uh, as long as it looks good and I'm happy so anyway that's how I feel when it comes to uh, uh, not working to full potential here but we get the job done so let's look at one of the uh, other comments Oh, and lots of nice comments about my family back uh, from the BVI here into the Philippines. I got, uh, I spoke with my brother-in-law yesterday. I spoke with my brother-in-law again today. And they're still doing uh, the shopping and getting settled in things that they normally do. Uh, seeing that he is a, uh, a Brit and uh, th that resided on uh, British Virgin Islands, he has to have some kind of residency status. So one of the things that he asked me about was, uh, how do I go about opening up a bank account? Of course, I have videos that on under the how-to playlist that we have here on my PI Dream that explain stuff like that. Obviously, he didn't watch that on the playlist, but that's okay. So I got a hold of him and I said, "Well, you cannot open a bank account legally uh, in the Philippines unless you have some type of residency status." Although his wife is a Sawa, uh, is from Lipa, so I said, "Just have her open up an account." But what he wants to do, he wants to transfer funds over, just like what I did. It took me about 30 days uh, to get my visa and then to uh, be able to open up the bank account. So I could transfer funds, so I could start paying my builder, and I could do things like uh, uh, get mm, accounts and things like that that you would need when you need some type of a formal ID. So, but they're doing good. My family's doing great. And as my friend, tomorrow, tomorrow's Saturday, and tomorrow, I think in Bahay Kubo here, I think uh, they're, all my family, they're gonna be over, uh, plus my uh, sister-in-law, uh, Ne, uh, is going, Nene is gonna be over, and uh, so we should have a full house here tomorrow and that should be for an interesting episode on Saturday so stay tuned for that. So I got a, I got a comment from Milo Freeman he says uh, James I've not been watching since the very beginning uh, that, and that's why a lot of people don't are missing some of the information that I already shared earlier so if you have an opportunity and you have the time and uh, a lot of time <laughs> uh, just watch from the very beginning and you'll see the evolution and a lot of the uh, uh, questions that people keep coming up with are answered in a lot of the earlier videos and in this one he says I've not been watching the very beginning uh, what will be your water source for the house what will be uh, we be connected to cable service satellite DSL FIOS and internet provision for entertainment is this an all-electric home where we have a gas hookup natural or propane uh, what is the cost of gas there what <laughs> lots of questions here uh, we mentioned the generator when you mentioned the generator room what are you referring to uh, a backup system to run the house off grid for or for an emergency are you still considering solar I've answered every one of these things many times Milo 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 you need to go back and you need to start watching some of my videos catch up with everybody else who are long-term and in firm subscribers here so anyway I will tell you these real quick so in case anybody else they do not have to do that so anyway, the, uh, the first question would be about the water source. The water source comes from the subdivision. The subdivision has their own wells. They have two storage tanks for phase one and phase two. Our water pressure is almost always 35 PSI uh, from that. And even when we lose water or when we lose electricity, uh, because the, the elevation of the tanks are so high, we still have great water pressure that provides water with no electricity from the natural uh, flow of gravity and uh, so we're good on that and it's also it's potable water but we're gonna have because you didn't ask this question about fil filters we're gonna have a three filtration system built into the uh, a water closet inside the basement that provides the water to the rest of the house uh, and that's like reverse osmosis uh, water softener and then like a charcoal canister kind of a thing uh, so we're good on that the other you were asking about uh, all the different utility provisions that we're gonna have here we have fiber right now I have fiber over inside my uh, tiny apartment uh, PLDT fiber and what we're gonna do is we will transfer that service here uh, they've been working and they're uh, I think they're done or they're almost done completing the infrastructure of all the fiber inside Tierra Maria 
And so uh, I might have to run another three or 400 meter cable to get me into phase one because there's nothing in phase two. I am the pioneer man of phase two. I'm the first house that's being built up here, but we will get it done. I'm sure we will. Um, uh, we will have cable TV connections, although I doubt we'll subscribe to cable TV. In the event that uh, when my wife and I are gone one day or my wife decides that she wants to have it, uh, we can connect up to cable TV. All they got to do is connect up to the outside of the house. Uh, the other question was electric or gas house? Uh, and I imagine you're talking about for our, um, for our cooking. Uh, we are all electric on the inside. Uh, the only gas that we're going to do is going to be for the grill, the outdoor grill, our slash dirty kitchen slash outdoor kitchen kind of a thing that we're going to do on the outside. And uh, that will be the only gas that we have inside the house. Uh, and you asked about, uh, oh, you said natural or propane. Whatever it is around here, I think this is propane. I think this is propane gas. Uh, but when you when you buy the grill, it tells you you can you can. It's two different types, but they come into the Philippines, which is what the standard is using for the Philippines. That's the same one that. Uh, so it's all corner. I'm sure, I'm sure we're good on that. Uh, we, uh, and you talked about the generator. The generator room is an emergency backup. It's not going to be to supplement anything. It's going to be for emergencies. When we have extended brownouts, uh, and especially for typhoon season, when the typhoons come through, and we, we need a generator to be able to keep the refrigerator on so we don't spoil food. And in the event uh, that uh, we need to shelter family and friends and stuff like that, we'll, we'll, we'll have uh, accommodations for that as well. Uh, what was it? Was that, is that all? Oh, you talked about solar. I talked about solar. I can't tell you how many times I talked about solar. Uh, if it's solar. in the budget, that was going to be one of the last things. We've already roughed in for it. We have one inch PVC that goes in the roofing cavity in the attic space uh, and it goes down and it's parked right next to the circuit breaker panel which will have an inverter connected right to that and what they will do is they make the connections into our uh, circuit breaker panel uh, via whatever the magic is that they do with the solar companies. If you watch the early ones, you'll see we've talked with multiple, multiple uh, solar companies, and uh, we'll make a final determination if there's money in the budget at the end of the build. And Salim AST says, uh, Hi James, you should keep the leftover tiles you might need for in the future in case uh, of cracked tiles, as it might uh, run out of stock when needed. That's a good suggestion, and uh, I was planning on doing that as well. Uh, we, we will be keeping uh, spare tiles, and we will be keeping uh, paint as well from the from the build job. We'll, we'll put most of that uh, inside the generator room, uh, away from the generator, of course. And John Ahern's asking a little bit about the uh, some of the features on the house and about some of the soil, what we're going to do with the soil that's been excavated. Well, we're moving, when, when we're digging the soil out, we're moving it to a temporary location. And then what will happen is we're going to call a truck in and the truck is going to come and we're going to fill the truck up and we're going to move that out. I had one of the subscribers, as a matter of fact, was asking for some of the soil, uh, but if they don't come soon enough, it's, it's going to be gone because our, our builder will be um, moving it to other places. Uh, there was a question about the, uh, the missing molding uh, that was supposed to be around the basement wall below the windows. From the artist rendition, I, I think what he's refer, I think what John is referring to, is uh, underneath the windows, which is like uh, uh, at the very top of the basement, but below the first floor, we have an accent detail that goes around, and it's probably oh, oh probably around mm, less less than a half a meter high, and it's got a slant and it goes down. It's a nice feature, and will also provide some protections, similar to what a ledge would do. Uh, for the windows in the basement. Yes, we are still planning on putting that. Uh, that's a pretty big task. I think should have uh, put the rebar in at the very beginning. Uh, so we will we will do that, and it will probably start uh, very shortly after we get done with the window uh, framing details that uh, you're talking about. Uh, it's all part of the detailing of the outside the house, and it will get accomplished. And and the good point, and I actually answered it in the comments section, but I'm, I'm going to do it again here in case anybody else has a question or it comes up inside your mind. It has to do with the sump, the sump hole that's in the center of the uh, garage right now, and it has some water in it. And of course, the sump pump itself has a float valve uh, or float mechanism on it that that doesn't kick in until the water is up, and it's up pretty high. It's got to be up pretty high before the float mechanism uh, causes the electricity to start the pump which means you would probably always have water in there. Well, what we will do at the end of the build, we will dry out the sump pit itself. It will be totally dry. And, and his concern was about smell. You know when water sits up for a long period of time, 
uh, it will is you'll probably start getting some odor and all inside there we will dry that area out and uh, it will be totally dry and the only reason it should ever get water in there in the future is if we have a flood so I'm hoping we never have to have water inside that sump pit again but we have to have it all set up for emergency contingencies and Irma Irma Abrazado, uh, who's a, a longtime subscriber and uh, constant gives a, constantly gives us good input on the on the blog here, and she says, uh, James, can you avoid putting security bars on the windows and just create a good security system on the perimeter of the house? I just think it will ruin the aesthetics and break the view. Now we're going to put security bars. Uh, as much as I hate to put security bars on the house, it is uh, common sense here in the Philippines. It's one of those kind of things that you, even if you don't like, for us, we won't, we won't be keeping valuables inside the house. We won't be, we, we, are not even putting a wall safe in because we don't maintain uh, jewelry. We don't maintain, but just the minimum amount of pesos, uh, because most of the things we'll use is we'll use the the BDO card when we dine, when we go shopping, uh, when we need a few extra pesos. So. But the thing is, the, the bad guys don't know that, that we're, we're not going to have, uh, well, hopefully they do now if they're watching this, <laughs> but we, we don't maintain any type of valuables inside the house. So, uh, yeah, and there are ways, there are ways to attractively put uh, security uh, reinforcement, security bars on the house, so it kind of blends in with some of the windows and some of the doors and things like that. And that's what, that's what we are going to try to achieve so we don't um, uh, deter or um, sacrifice the aesthetics of the looks of the house. Several people ask, who feeds the puppies? Who feeds uh, Mary Ann and Hapoan on the weekend? Well, uh, again, that's been uh, kind of answered. Uh, and what that is, we have people that live here on site 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So the dog get table scraps uh, from the leftovers uh, when they finish eating. And, and you can tell by the, both of our, our dog's bellies, neither one of them are starving. Anyway, I think that's enough for today because if I add too many more, it's going to make our video run long today. I'll try to do more of these Bahi Kupo uh, time sessions, and it's, it just seems to be more personal too when I get to address uh, the folks individually and, uh, and, and share the information because when you watch it on the video, everybody gets to see it. Not everybody reads the comments. So I'm going to close for now. It's almost uh, it's two minutes before the end of lunch, and uh, hopefully everybody's jumping back onto the job. Ganyan. Oh. <laughs> Putol dito. <clears throat> I think 45 dyan. Hindi, ito lang 45. So anyway, the, the outcome of my meeting uh, talking project management with my builder uh, was the fact that uh, the, the crew should not have gone home. And I was, I was trying to get an understanding why they went home. Uh, it's beautiful right now. It's perfect weather. We lost maybe an hour and a half for the work today. And I asked him what type of a contract, because he has a fixed price contract with them also. And you would think if they had a fixed price contract, uh, it doesn't matter if they get it done in three days or three weeks, they get the same amount of money. So one would think, logically, I need to get this thing done in three days because I can be on my next job and I can be making even more money. Ah, but there lies the dilemma in the Philippines sometimes. Uh, it doesn't always work like that. And I, and I, I don't understand the logic. I'm trying to understand the logic. Uh, but anyway, so I told them, uh, we, we're on a time schedule here. And, and the amount of time that it's going to take them at the rate that they're going right now, working half days, working mm, even when they're here for the eight hours, they only work maybe between four and five hours is probably a day. And, and then taking half days off. And that, you, every time it rains, you cannot leave. Every time it just rains and sprinkles just a little bit. So I said, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, uh, normally, again, I say I always want to provide the income to the workers, but when it's costing t time, when you have a schedule, I have deadlines I have to meet. I have to, uh, uh, I have to make a trip in December, and I have to schedule airline tickets uh, based upon that up upon project completion. So when it affects me, then you have to start changing your priorities around 
about how you handle situations like this. So I said, let's go ahead and uh, let's get a Bobcat and let's uh, bring it in. And it's probably about four hours worth of work, maybe five hours worth of work. And we can clear this whole thing out in one afternoon and we can start actually, do, we can do the grading, we can start doing the retaining wall and we can start putting the flooring in with the drainage and everything like that. And we will be ahead of our, we'll be ahead because they're, those guys are projecting two weeks to get all this done. And uh, it's, it's just, it's not acceptable. Uh, so he said, yeah, that's what he's gonna do. And what he found out is what his rent is for the, for the, uh, for the Bobcat, for the excavator, uh, the, the small, small heavy equipment. And the operator is half the price of what he's paying for, for laborers for the, this job that we have on So it's a no brainer. We're gonna do that. We're gonna get this knocked out. And you're probably saying to yourself, James, so why were you up there still digging after you d discussed this? Well, I have, I have goals and uh, I follow through. Unlike some, some people, I follow through. And one of my goals for today is I just wanted to break through to the top of the apex of that little hill so I could see down into my basement from right there. I wanted to be able to see inside there. So even though I know the, ex the, the, the Bobcat's gonna come and wipe all that stuff within a matter of minutes, uh, I just wanted to do that because I have goals and I follow through with my goals and you should too. Well, these welding machines are awfully quiet up here and they're quiet because they're turned off and they're turned off because my welders went home. They must have gone home with the, the driveway diggers. <sighs> well, it might seem like these guys are taking forever on a skim coat, uh, but the, the thing is, if you've been in some houses in the Philippines, You'll notice if, if you go into people's houses, I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of people's houses, you see the texture of this right here. <laughs> and you see this? Not with the cement sitting on it, but painted. That's the finished coat that they have inside there. That is their wall and that's their finished finished coat. Uh, the, the finishing work that's being done in the house here is made up to the highest standards. It's A plus standards what these guys are doing. Uh, and it takes time. It takes many coats. It takes many sanding uh, events. And but it's it's going to be like first class type of a finish. And that's what we're looking for. So that's okay if it takes a little bit of while to do that. This can't be good. The three tiles. Four tiles. I thought there was only one that was messed up. Well, it is the end of the day, and uh, the, the guys are still down in the basement, and they're working on the tile. They repaired. Uh, remember, I said they had one tile that had it was sticking up a little high, and we could have left it there, and most people wouldn't have noticed it. Um, but uh, my builder thought, uh, yeah, it was the, it was a mistake, and it needed to be corrected. So when they pulled that one tile up, because uh, some of the tiles aren't exact because they're manufactured and sometimes they're not exactly the same so when you pull up one tile to try to match up all the other ones to follow a long line so that you don't have any gap inside there uh what they found they couldn't get any the other ones to match the the fit it didn't fit properly so when we replaced one we ended up having to replace multiple tiles inside there so that took up the the second half of the afternoon down there i expected all the tiles in the basement everything except for the generator room to be completed today. Uh, the generator room and of course the, the spare bedroom, which is gonna be wood tiles inside there. Uh, but it took a lot of time to make that correction for those 
tomorrow I expect that the entire uh, basement, except for the generator room and the, the wood tiles inside, I expect it all to be done tomorrow. And then they will work their way into the generator room. I made the call that we're going to use the same tiles inside the generator room as well. If we don't have enough tiles, I plan on making a trip up to Alabang anyway on Sunday, I believe. And uh, I, have to, I have to coordinate with the people for the, the CR doors. So at that time, if we need any extra ones, I'll pick up some extra tiles and up there as well. Uh, we had a pretty successful day with the roofing team, uh, but they left. They left early today, and 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 it was probably okay. I don't feel so bad about that because they would have gotten about two more hours worth of work, and two hours worth of roofing work is a lot of work. But they uh, uh, they departed about the same time that the driveway guys left. And I had the guys stay for the driveway two hours worth of steady considering they only work about four hours a day Anyway, two hours worth we could have got a lot done uh, But I think it's uh, I think it's uh, it's bad that they 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 decided not to stay and we had to make some decisions some heavy decisions to get things working so uh, again, we are not uh, we're gonna we're gonna get some heavy equipment small heavy equipment uh, to remove this soil and I'm hoping he gets that coordinates that tomorrow uh, tomorrow is Saturday, so if it doesn't happen Saturday, then probably Monday, but I'm hoping Saturday so we can have that whole area cleared down there and start working on drainage. Uh, we, you see we didn't do, mm, I don't think we did anything in the CR today uh, in the basement, so that's about where it's going to be for a while until we get the uh, door that goes inside there. Our uh, basement's going to be done. We'll be working more on the roofing, of course, uh, the guys continuing to work on skim coat the I don't know if you noticed over here no you didn't notice because I did not show you today over here uh, for the fencing we got concrete hollow block up uh, that, that that is sitting on top of the spread footer all the way around so we did get some luck here and it's not a zigzag pattern I checked it out so we're, we're good I think they moved some of the soil there and uh, we have it so this got done today this got done today this got done today and it's starting work on here today so if tomorrow is a good day I expect uh, we'll have at least half of the section on the east side of the house the fencing done and uh, then they will start working on the the um, plaster coat just like they're doing right here I don't know how much they got on the other side they might have all of it done on the other side uh, they move the, the fencing team is really good and they're moving really fast here so I'm glad about that and you also saw that they got the grate, the, the frame that goes around the grate that goes into the sump pit down inside the basement. And that will be installed, I imagine that will be installed tomorrow along with the uh, tile inside the basement. We'll see if that uh, is completed tomorrow or not. Oh, and one more thing. You remember all the window frames, the window frames are getting corrected. Uh, Kimpy, our, our foreman, he's the one in charge of that. And you see him doing all the grinding and the chipping and things like that. And I will be glad when Kempe gets up here and starts working on these two windows in particular. From the very beginning, we've we've had you can see the trickle effect that's going, and it's it's pulling all of the dirt and sand and everything from here, and it's going down into the basement area right there. I want, you saw it on the wall. It looks like it's cascading down the wall, and that should have been corrected a long time ago. Uh, that should have been a key when we saw that going up. But I just thought I just thought it was flowing from the top here, rolling over. And um, I don't know, but that needs to get corrected as well. I'll be glad when, when he takes care of that. So anyway, I am going to pack up Baje Kubo and head back to the apartment and finish doing the editing here and get this uploaded so I can get this out to you at a hopefully decent time tonight. Uh, it, even, even though we have some setbacks, we have some successes. We have more successes than we do setbacks. And that's what's important. And, and as long as we're on schedule, that's really all I care about. And, uh, but we're getting there. And I'm optimistic. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying. I enjoy every day that I come out here. It, it's an experience. Even when there's mistakes. Because you learn how to correct mistakes also. And these are things that you can use if you're doing your build. And it doesn't matter whether you're doing the build in the Philippines or you're doing the build in Iwo Jima. <laughs> <laughs> or wherever in the world that you have. Uh, you can learn from other people's mistakes and you can learn from other people's successes as well. And that's what this uh, vlog is all about. It's, it's about cross-collaboration, sharing, and uh, having people learn uh, so that they can uh, do the same things as well. So anyway, uh, tomorrow is Saturday and it's going to be Build Day 181. Yes, Build Day 181 on the construction schedule here at Ville Feliz. 
So again, if you enjoyed today's video, uh, please give me a thumbs up. If you found it informative, uh, please share. And if you found it the least bit entertaining and you have not subscribed, just click on that little My PI Dream Heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen and you will be subscribed and you will get the updates, the notification updates each time I push a new video. So until tomorrow, uh, remember today is Friday. <laughs> uh, TGIF for many of you, but for me, tomorrow's a regular work day, so there's no such thing as TGIF. Maybe there's a TGIS uh, for me. <laughs> so anyway, until tomorrow, you have a wonderful and blessed Friday.